and an issue which I know you're passionate about, illegal downloading. Um, for being that you're in the industry, what are the knock-on effects that you're seeing of illegal downloads and how it's impacting on the industry as a, as a whole? Well, 1.2 billion tracks were downloaded in 2010 as opposed to 370 million that were actually purchased. So there's a massive call on music. How many of those people would have actually bought the record? It's impossible to tell. It's absolutely impossible to tell. Other than people, there are a percentage, and I don't know what that percentage is, but the truth is, rather than say what the future is, where we're going, how do we deal with that, yes, we have legislation that is now in place. Personally, I don't think it's strong enough. But, you know, downloading for free is theft. There's no difference to you, I, or anyone else walking into Sainsbury's or any other shop and stealing something. And I've said it time and time again, it's theft. I mean, I don't understand how clear that needs to be in law. Section 1 of the Theft Act 1968, taking property with the intention of permanently depriving the owner of it. That doesn't specifically tell us whether it's a physical item, you know, or, 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 or it's just, it's the most ridiculous um, philosophy that you can steal music and not be charged with anything, and it's not an offence, and that we're absolutely fine because it's, 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 it's not a physical product. I find that astonishing. So it's irrelevant what the percentage is in the difference of who would have bought it, who wouldn't have bought it. But I do think that the key here is we have to create better music. We have to create better products. And I think people will buy into things as they have done, have that, excuse me, tongue tied as they have done in the past with the Arctic Monkeys who downloaded, well, we gave away free downloads of the Arctic Monkeys, you know, but it was the downloads were the demos. But people got into the band, that did turn them onto it. But the big thing is here, we owned those demos. We were able to give them away for free. They weren't owned by the record company. We weren't giving someone else's product away. And when we then put a record out, it sold massive amounts. Um, and the reason it sold massive amounts is we created a club within a culture. And people bought into that. And I don't believe that we're doing that at the moment. So I think that it's six or one and a half dozen of the other. Yes, people are downloading. But are they buying into these clubs? Are they buying into the new culture, whatever it's going to be? You know, whether it's, it's the culture of the Rolling Stones and the Beatles through to the culture of you know, um, I don't know, glam rock or punk rock or whatever it's going to be, there has to be a new culture. And as an industry, we're looking for it, and when it comes along, we need to embrace it. Because punk rock may have started with the Sex Pistols, but it gave us Elvis Costello, it gave us The Police, which is Sting. It gave us lots of big, big artists in that era that wrote great songs and were great performers. At the moment, the biggest, um, the biggest area of new artists is coming from a family entertainment programme you know, X Factor pop idols, which, hey, look, I'm not knocking it. It's family entertainment. Is it um, creating long-term careers for artists? I guess not. Is it creating sales? Yes. Is it creating business? Yes. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but I don't think that in that particular avenue, um, at that corridor, we're creating any massive futures, but we need to look at it and say, well, that's part of the culture today, but we need to create different corridors and make sure that those corridors are you know, as fast moving as TV promoted or TV um, artists are turning themselves around and, and, and there's a massive turnaround in those artists. But then you know, the truth is I guess if I went on TV every Saturday night singing Three Blind Mice for nine weeks, maybe I'd have a number one record. But maybe not, you know, but hey, who knows.